against the authority uh, have made a substitution in their roster. They've replaced their support player, Karelius, with the new guy on the block. So I'm Dude, uh, the new super player of Team uh, AAA. And he's going to bring something new to the Against All Authority lineup. So with my uh, larger uh, champion pool, I can bring uh, more opportunity to my team. Nono's going to have a new support, and if he's going to have new support champions to play with, it means the entire bottom lane of Against All Authority just got a whole lot scary. Welcome back, everyone. I'm sitting here with the CEO of SK Gaming, Alexander Miller. Now, uh, Mr. Miller, Alexander, first off, we're here in this studio. From your point of view, you had a lot of experience. What does it tell you about how far we've come with League of Legends? I think in esports in, in general, we leaped ahead a lot with what um, the investment right put into esports. It's hilarious to see this stage. I mean, I saw it at an, at an early stage when um, the crew was still building it. And I don't know, 10 years ago, when we were starting to attend esports events all over the globe and everything, we were just dreaming of having this moment. And now you're sitting there. And I remember I had my whole family here for our kickoff match against Fnatic, which didn't go that good for us, okay? Mm -hmm. But still, it was a, a great moment for me personally to be there, to open up this studio, to open up this season. And you know, it's, it, it always went up in esports. And this is proof that we have reached a point where there's no turning back. All right. Now, of course, SK Gaming is in the race more than ever. And they hover kind of between third and fourth place now. Is that realistically where you think they belong, seeing what Fnatic and Gamut can do? It's uh, 20 matches into a 28 matches season. So um, the tableau doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. We have no chance of uh, getting first or second in the regular season. We can, we can surprise in the playoffs, maybe. Um, Right now, we have to make sure that we don't drop into the, the race of 5th uh, to 8th. Yep. I think um, the results, especially the, the result from before, it helps us. The match now might help us as well. But we have to do our homework. We have to uh, beat EG in the, next, in the upcoming match to have a, a good position for the playoffs. And if we reach the playoffs in third place, then I think we have good chances to finish top two. But other than that, might kill us for this season. Talking about that matchup versus EG, it's always tense because, of course, there's a little bit of history there. We got Wicked and Snoopy, who used to be on SK. That's not really a point anymore. They're all friends, but you're both not in your best form, not EG and SK. So what are your expectations for that match specifically? We had a bad start today. Um, we had a long team talk after this match. And it, right now it comes down to the team understanding what needs to happen right now to turn this into a W against EG. The teams practice a lot throughout the week. They see each other in a lot of scrim matches. So they, they know the opponents in and out, but it comes down to bringing it to the screen here at this studio. We're up to it, we're up to the challenge, but so is EG. I expect a very close match, and I guess the winner will have the upper hand on the race of third place. Okay, now, um, of course, you're a CEO. That's different from being a coach uh, of a team. And someone who's always been very important, of course, is Ocelot to the team. So what's your view on him? Like, what values does he bring to an organization and a team? Mm. First of all, Carlos is a very emotional player. Um, so in the mix-up of five guys playing the game, he's one of the guys, he can win matches for you, but he can also lose matches for you. He's not this um, totally constant player, but sometimes he surprises the opponent out of nowhere, and this is when you turn matches. Um, this is what he brought to the table playing-wise. Of course, he's a big figure out there. His streaming numbers are enormous. His Facebook numbers are enormous. But this is not what this, this is all about. This is about winning games, and we need Carlos to win games. To win games, he needs to be in a certain mindset. And I think he takes his mindset from being connected to his fans, being loved by his fans. So therefore, it's, a, it's the overall package that we need from him. Okay, talking about the overall package um, for the season, you brought Candy Panda back. How much do you make a decision as a CEO in specific lineup changes, or where does that decision come from? Um, I try not to play a leading role in lineup decisions. I never did in the uh, Counter Strike environment as well. I try to have the team have the last word on decisions like that because they need to work. It needs to work among these five guys. 
I come at the very end. I need, you know, I need to get along with the players as well. I need to be able to reach them whenever I, I want to talk to them or need to talk to them, prep talks, stuff like this. Um, but I come at the very end. So I have the team, I have Minzik, and then at the very end, I'm talking to the team as well. Okay. Um, finally, what are your hopes and expectations for SK for the rest of the season? As I said before, um, we want to take these last couple of weeks to prepare for the playoffs. We want to be in a good position to enter the playoffs, seeding-wise. Um, we want to stay in this league, obviously, and we want to be way better in the summer set of this league than we were in the spring so far. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we've seen a lot of teams making player changes this season, so we asked the Dragonborns to tell us a little more about the strategy behind the roster swaps. Take a look. We had some problems during our first weeks in LCS, so we gave Spontex some time to improve on his attitude, but it finally had to come down to our roster change. We didn't really fit as a team with Spontex, so we have decided to change it. Changing a player in your current roster is a tough thing to do, but since we've already played with Yamato before as a sub, it was a lot easier to bring him into the main team. Yamato, he is a great leader actually, and something we definitely need in the team. Yamato and Spontex is like uh, the sun and the moon in difference. Yamato is more a lot talkative and he has full map vision where Spontex lacked a bit in the map vision. What I can bring to the team I think is a lot of experience and a lot of strategies which is my like my strength. I think that's what, what's lacking, the level ones, the strategy in general, knowing what to do in the game. So I feel like I'm I'm the leader Dragonborns needs. We tried Dexter for two weeks, but in the end uh, his lack of offline experience was a really big problem. And we saw that Maluno started working hard on uh, the problems we had before, so we decided to get him back. A big reason behind the roster change was that Spontek's native language is not English. He had some trouble understanding some things we tried to communicate to him. With Yamato, that's not a problem at all. I think Yamato's uh, gameplay fits us really much more, and it's an improvement. So it, I, th I think it was a good decision. My versatility in champions is, differs from everything. I can play AP, AD, I can play tanks. I just know what to do. If, I, if I'm supposed to die for the team, I'm going to die for the team. That's my role. I know what to do. So the improvement we've seen so far with Yamato makes me really satisfied. I'm not regretting the change at all. So we heard there from Dragonborn, the difference between Yamato, Kanan and Spontex is the sun and the moon. The problem that we've had right now is that Yamato Cannon has failed to shine. It's the truth. There's no other word for it at all. He's been trying to do the best he can in that top lane, but he's been coming against the best that Europe has to throw at him, and it has not worked out for him thus far. These two teams are currently sitting bottom of the ladder right now, and they're both coming into this matchup with new players. Yeah. Maluno's returning to the seat, but he was benched, he was removed, you know, he was taken off the main lineup. So you've got to wonder, is there personality clashes happening there? Well, the good thing is that we heard from Dragonborns that he started to work on things which, you know, led to his uh, benching in the first place. So hopefully that's a uh, good sign for Dragonborns. In this next game against, against Authority, you know, a single win here can't catch them up to where against Authority are, but my God, would it be a good step for Dragonborns. They have to do it. It's now literally do or die because the number of losses that they have is higher than any other team in the league right now. And yep. unless they start balancing out some wins, it's not going to help them out. And of course, we've mentioned the Dragonborns roster. We also have to talk about the against authority roster because they've got a new dude in the bottom lane. Yeah, Coralius obviously was bench his champion pool. We talked about it time and time again that, you know, if it's not Sona, he wasn't on top of his game. And yeah. honestly, even with his Sona, sometimes we saw some sketchy play coming out of him, which, you know, Coralius was the first person to admit it just wasn't working. Yeah. They pointed a little bit towards No-No and needing someone there in that bottom lane with him. And maybe, dude, in there, being French can help No-No out there. Yeah, it's definitely going to help out. It's going to be four French players in the lineup. While we're actually talking about that, let's pull the lineups on screen and remind everybody of exactly who is who. Four against all authority. It will, of course, be Freddy, Virtual, Virtual Schleyer, Nono, and Dude. 
And for Dragonborn, Yamato Cannon, Maluno returning to the lineup, Shushe, Hosan, and Muvert. There's one thing I definitely want to keep my eyes on for against All Authority. Because they've replaced their substitute player, it's a very similar story to what happened with Vulcan this week. They got a new sub in, yeah. they took Bloodwater, and he really helped them out. On their Thursday night matches, they actually beat TSM in quite a convincing game because he became the shout caller, he became the playmaker and help them out. So we wonder if Dude will do the same for AAA. Well, we've made this uh, whole comparison before that sometimes a roster change can, you know, bring a new spur of uh, willingness to win and uh, the want to win as well. But on the other hand, as sadly Dragonborn seemed to have found out in those last couple of weeks, that it can also work against you, bring that instability that you've already got. And, you know, it didn't really solve anything. Hopefully now that Maluno's come back in, they've made a, a step backwards almost in terms of the harmony of the team. Uh, and with Yamato Cannon there, you heard he thinks he's the leader that uh, the Dragonborns need to push them forward here. Well, we'll see how they perform because Dragonborn's best case scenario is going to be that 15 to 13. If they win... Every single game that they have from here on out, they'll have like a 52% win ratio, which is still much lower than the guys yep. in the top four. So we'll see how that pans out. And we've heard it from him. He is the in-game caller. He's the voice for the team. And if he does add that layer of strategy and calling to the Dragonborn's aggressive and, and powerful early game, they may actually be as well-rounded as they need to be. Well, let's have a look at the key players for this one, starting with Against All Authority and their new man, Diode. Uh, he's got a lot of work to do. He's got a lot of weight on his shoulders from the against all authority guys. Yes, yeah, so true. Like we said, he's going to be helping out Nono. We already know that his champion pool includes Janna, Lulu, and Thresh. So a little bit different with that Janna play. He was quite confident saying that he might pull Janna out. So we'll see if he does decide to pull him out in this particular matchup. And of course, for the Dragonborns, we have to highlight Maluno. He was tagged as the medic for some of his clutch saves while playing Imumu earlier on in the tournament. The question is, can he bring it back here and save the Dragonborns from relegation? Well, he's definitely going to have to become the medic once again. I still remember the flash to save Shushe from Ace in the hole. He's currently got uh, the highest KDA on his team, which is lower than most of the other teams in the league because they have so many losses to their name. And the question is, is the voice of Yamato and the presence of Maluna going to be enough to turn this, these, this losing streak around. I believe there's 0 and 8 right now. Yeah, and the whole trust factor there, you've got to have a jungler that you can rely on to be in the right place at the right time when you actually need him to be. And I think Maluno is going to be a better fit than we saw from Dexter. We heard from Shushe that Dexter's lack of tournament experience really seemed to hurt him um, in those couple of weeks that he's played for Dragon Bonds. Now we'll see how they decide to play this out because we've got so many different rosters, uh, or so many different key players in the roster. A lot of things can change. Um, from Against All Authority in particular, having a support player that can have different types of playmakers, different types of counter initiation champions, like, you know, somebody like a Janna, for example, means they may change their pick order and their pick priority around. This matchup is currently 2-0 in favor of Against All Authority because of some decision making from Dragonborns. Game one, they lost because of a base race. Yeah. <laughs> and then game two, Against All Authority, they had a, a fairly defensive combo. They had Shen, they had Kale, and they simply survived the burst damage that uh, Dragonborns is putting down. Dragonborns ran Lux and Elise last time. They couldn't pick up kills because they couldn't get through Intervention and they couldn't get through Stand United. So let's move into uh, Champion Select and what we're expecting to see here. A Draven ban and a Shen ban, the first two coming out. Draven totally ex uh, totally expected. Obviously, that's aimed straight in at Hosan, who's played fantastic Draven uh, whenever we've seen it from him. Shen, uh, Jarvan 4 coming out here. Diana and Nasus, they're not messing around. This is obviously two teams that know exactly what they want to ban out against the other. Yeah, they know what their targets, they know what they have in mind, and they know what they would like to accomplish with this particular matchup. A number of champions we've seen a few times today already, Jav and Shen, Diana to say the least. So we'll see how, you know, the matchups goes, but interesting to see that Thresh is banned out. Dude, the new player for Against All Authority, but Dragonborns, they've done their research. They know his champion pool, they know what yeah. he plays, and they're not comfortable dealing with that initiation power that Thresh has. Well, let's see what Against All Authority go for here, first of all. Uh, coming into last week's play, Freddy's most played champion was Renekton earlier on, but with that Nasus taken out of there, with no Jarvan for the jungle, Volley Bear, and uh, probably much an expected choice. Uh, not too surprising at all. He is one of sort of the high tier junglers at the moment. I do want to mention that both uh, Elise and Karthus are available as well. And I was going to say Kale because Schleyer ran it the last time they played. So there's a number of picks that are still free. In terms of the AD carries, Nono still has Ezreal available. It has been his go-to champion. So we'll see if he decides to pick that one up. 
But with Volley Bear in the jungle, it's just, you know, is really, really strong. His early game is yeah. very powerful. The healing that he gets from his passive really, really can turn uh, team fights around, especially at these low levels. The Dragonborns may be learning from past mistakes. It was intervention that cost them the game against author against against all authority last time. Maybe they're going to pick him up this time. Well, we've had Zyra here picked up as well, which you now so for some other teams, Giants in particular, you'd look at that Zyra and say, well, support or mid lane possible. But to be honest, in the Dragonborns lineup, you'd almost definitely say that that was going to the support mover. I completely agree with that, and for a number of reasons. First and foremost, we've seen Shushe playing Kale in the past. He yep. tends to build her very AP heavy, going for the burst damage to instantly kill somebody with that Reckoning and then some splash damage. Uh, just some notes, Nash's Tooth is a little bit more expensive because we are playing on yep. patch 3.5. It is live with the, 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 the game server that we're playing on. Maluno had Ghost and Smite as his summoner spells originally and has since swapped them to Flash Smite. So we may actually see Kale in the jungle from him if Shushe doesn't take it. Well, let's see what against authority. They were hanging on Trindom here there for a good while. Don't expect that really want, uh, to come out. However, Janna going to be locked in. We talked about this earlier on. Dude, the new jungler plays Janna a lot, and that will be his first appearance. So the synergies here are very, very good. Misfortune scales so well off of additional attack damage and double up damage, the bullet time damage. We see Genja building double bloodthirsters on her just to get that scaling on her ultimate so high. So when you combine Eye of the Storm with Misfortune, get all that additional AD, it makes it very, very powerful. It also gets them you know, a very good amount of wave clear, which is what Against the Authority currently does not have. You just charge up that Howling Gale, clean out the waves, and obviously you know, defend your turret. If Udio is locked in, which it has been locked in, I'd like to see where this goes. Shushe, he may have been trolling me, but he was talking about playing Udio in the mid lane. And he was saying it was one of his he's champions. Shushe is probably not trolling. Correct. This is, this is why I want to bring it up. Because he was talking about uh, Shushe, and he was saying in the mid lane, he, he likes to run it. And this was pre-changes. Now remember, this is on 3.5. So the Udia buffs and, and, and modifications are in. He gets additional mobility from his monkey's, monkey's agility passive. And of course, his now bear stance allows him to run through minions and land that on-hit stun a little bit easier. So I really yeah. like this pickup. I just have no idea where it's going. Yeah, with the Tristana in there as well. Obviously, it was the uh, second pick of that round for Dragonborns. On the other side, against Authority, looking like they're going to be going very thirsty, which is interesting because we talked about the last time these two met, uh, teams met. Dragonborns had Lux and Elise to try and burst them down. It was countered a moment with Kale, and look what we've got here. Exactly the same, but on opposite sides. Polar opposites, and the question is who's going to execute the strategy better? Because the one key element that was missing from the, the previous engagement was the fact that uh, the Shen ultimate, that Stand United, was not there. So we'll, we'll like to see what they decide to lock in for this last pick, uh, seeing as though Shen isn't there, as we mentioned. But there's not a lot of initiation potential here from against the authority. They're going to be looking for a pick strategy. They're going to wait for a Light Binding to land. They're going to wait for a Cocoon to land, blow that target up, and then engage for a fight. Because there's not too much you know, initiation power that we do tend to see from a lot of different teams. There's a fair amount of poke that come out and some pretty good wave clear, but if they don't land those key snares or stuns, uh, they, they're not going to be able to pick up kills. And I was just about to say, Kazix is left open here. We saw him uh, picking up the second pentakill in uh, the European LCS with Alex H earlier on, and Dragonborn's going to be going again uh, in for this Kazix. That's obviously uh, going to be switched around a little bit. Looking like we will be seeing Shushe in the middle with Kale, Yamato Cannons, Kazix in the top, and uh, Udia in the jungle. So that is the place that we feel he does fit the best. St. Vicious ran it yesterday during the North American LCS, and uh, we actually seen Hotshot running him in the top lane, actually, the night before. So he's featured three times already out of, you know, both North America and EU in terms of the matchups. But it'll be the first time for us here. And I definitely want to see how he's going to duel with Volley Bear at those early levels. He's got a very good clear time if he decides to max out that uh, Phoenix stance. Or if he decides to go more aggressive, sort of 1v1, he could put some more points into Tiger. So it's definitely something we're going to have to keep an eye on. And whether or not the Tiger is going to be powerful enough to overcome the Bear. Oh, see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we saw on the screen actually both Yamato Cannon and Maluno looking at pieces of paper. I have no idea what was on those pieces of paper. Um, but you would think at this stage, just before a game, they're looking over something that they planned. Another thing that I noticed was Shushe yawning quite a few times during the uh, uh, picks and bans and what have you there, which, you know, 
you probably just look over and dismisses. Uh, he's just wanting to get ready and he's kind of bored right now, waiting to get ready into the game. But also, you have to wonder how are these guys, you know, if they've stayed up late preparing Dragon Ball and say, we have to make this one happen. This is the game where we can start to push ourselves towards, you know, a decent win-loss ratio. Um, but at the same time, if that makes them tired coming in today, that could cost them on the other hand. So, the Dragonborns are one loss away okay. from being the oh, Copenhagen one, Wolves one, in the first three weeks of the tournament. They are currently 0 and 8, and the Wolves went 0 and 9 in the opening weeks of, you know, the LCS. So, if the Dragonborns drop yet another game, the third consecutive one to against all authority, you have to start feeling, well, when do the changes happen? They've changed their roster. This is the second time. They seem confident with the players that they have and, and, you know, with the decisions that they've made. Now they need to make it happen. Yamato, very outspoken, saying, I can play any champion, I make the plays, and now he's got the champion that can really make big plays happen. So the funny thing you mentioned, that if they lose this one, they go Copenhagen Wolves style for the first half. The problem that they have here is that there is no second half after this to bring it all back and make themselves look good. They've already had their first half of the season going down. So let's have a look then and see what we're going to see at level one. Early ward out there from Dude on that curved bush, which tells me they just want to make sure that there's no invade on that top side of the map, especially since they've watered the blue as well. It's a fairly defensive start from both teams, and you can understand why. When you're sitting at the bottom of the table, you don't want to throw a match away at, you know, level one. You don't want those crazy, crazy engages. Um, I know I keep harping about, about NA, but do yourself a favor and watch this week's games because the level one action is possibly the most dramatic we've seen out of any LCS week to date. Uh, four on four level one fights that go you know, multiple ways in terms of kills, but very, very defensive, very slow start. Couple of wards being put down for vision, and generally, it just looks like the Dragonborns and against Authority want to get to the laning phase. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. Tristan and Zyra are on the top side of the map here for Dragonborn, so it looks like they will be initiating that lane switch as down in the bottom by the Tribush, Dio would actually put down his pink ward and got rid of the uh, ward there that was put down earlier on by Dragonborn. So he just wanted to check that they not put an early ward in there and that they were coming for that late invade. It's a really nice little pink wall, you know, a pink battle, which we've heard a number of supports talking to us about because you've already changed the gold in favor of your team a little bit. You've denied vision you've also gained a little bit of gold and you've placed your own vision down so it's a very very small lead but that's what this game is about creating those small advantages we do see a lane swap coming in though as both teams are taking their red buff you can see Tristana and Zyra positioning themselves to go top lane against Elise Elise should be relatively safe against those grasping roots as soon as she gets a point into that repel Yep, and we saw that Miller just taking away his red buff. Of course, Yamato Cannon will be one versus two here against Nono and Dude, which uh, I'm really interested to see how Dude does. Obviously, he's uh, one of the players, in fact, he's the only player this week that we've not seen before. We've already seen Yamato Cannon, of course, in action. And Maluno now is headed towards that blue buff. Freddy just looking to uh, put a ward down on that ramp earlier on. And you now, no one wants those three man ganks. No. Now, in terms of the three-man ganks that do arrive at 3 minute 30 or have been to date, and then this is the patch where the turrets have received a buff. So that initial shot of damage that comes down has been bumped from 94.5% to 105%. So you actually take additional tower damage for that very, very first shot. I've spoken to a couple of the different designers on the thinking behind the change, and it's pretty much to, to give you a fighting chance in those two versus three situations. As long as your jungler is in tune with the gank coming, he can be there to help out. And if you get some CC down or you, you know, survive long enough, uh, the, end, the attacking champions can take one or two turret hits less because of the changes. Well, we see that both AD carry and support lanes are pushing up onto those turrets. No, no, and dude already hammering away on that one. Hosanna movement trying to get in there, but the presence of virtual is a dangerous one. Being able to flip you back into turret range is already uh, an instant vulnerability uh, that you've got there if he decides to come speeding at you. But in the end, it looks like they're going to have to back off. And I really, really like what Against Authority have done yet. They've split the experience so Freddy's going to be a little bit behind in levels in comparison to Yamato Cannon. But look at the HPs of those two towers. Just Virtual's presence alone has kept Hosanna Mover away from the tower. On the other side of the coin, Maluno is nowhere to be found. And Yamato Cannon has lost all of his HP. He's burning through a lot of his potions. And his turret is down to one third life. So yes, no kills have happened. But that's immediately an advantage to AAA in terms of map presence. Right now, though, 
You see the uh, CS difference. Now, across the board is in favor of Dragonborns right now, uh, which is a nice thing to have for them. We'll see how that changes uh, if and when this next cell, uh, this first turret, is taken out here by Against Authority. Is Virtual now headed his way in towards middle. Shushate right now is only level four. There's the fling coming down. Oh, he flashes away from the light but There's a flash in from Virtual. Have they got enough? Yes, they have. First blood picked up there by Slayer. So nicely done. Now, no, no, and. Uh... That uh, dude are battling out. See, gonna have to get used to this dude in the bottom lane. They do manage to fend off Maluno, but a very good first blood there. Combo from Schleyer and Virtual. They committed to the fight. They both burned flashes. They got that frenzy munch down. And then, of course, the passive auto attack proc from Schleyer. Really, really nicely done as Maluno comes into middle. He wants to make sure that that CS doesn't go to waste here and he'll uh, gladly be taking that of his own. He did get that Spirit Stone in before he went home and then came down to the bottom to defend. But again, Yamato Kainen, uh, Kainen finds himself all alone in this bottom lane. No, no, just going to try and zone him out completely. He's actually he's going to go in aggressive, gets a couple of auto attacks off. But the first turret of the game will fall here in favor of against all authority with that first blood. Brilliant start. Now, because of Virtual's presence in the mid lane, you've seen just at the top there, as Hosen and Movement had a little bit more time to pressure the top lane tower, they've got it down to about a third, and they're going to be looking to pick it up in the next one or two waves to balance out that loss. If Nono and Dude can get themselves in position to defend, they may actually to, you know, hold that top lane tower a little bit longer. Uh, going back to the mid lane gank really quickly, we actually seen the smart ping coming in. There was the on my way ping from Virtual, so I like the little green arrow in the new sound effect. Well, well done, Riot. Well, it helps us to, you know, see exactly where they're coming from um, and what they're thinking, which, you know, with normal pings, you don't know uh, all the time. And we can only really uh, guess as to what they're uh, talking about in that. But Torrit has gone down now in this top lane for Dragonborns, and that will leave us tied on that front. But a 300, 350 gold lead, I think it is right now with uh, the way that it's ticking over. Schleyer versus Shushay in the middle in terms of CS, 44 to 35. And a 600 gold lead on that front already for the looks. It's pretty much just that kill that's separating these two teams in terms of the gold. Dude, once again with the pink ward down, he's already showing some vision dominance in his first matchup here at LCS. His AD carry is a little bit behind in CS, but it's not... Nothing to write home about right now. And the teams are very, very even. We haven't seen too much jungle pressure outside of really holding the lane from both Virtual and from Maluno. So and the first blood. Yeah, well, and the first blood. <laughs> very, very, very good point. But it's it's not as aggressive as we've been seeing from the other matches. Maluno trying to catch to you, though. Yeah, and he's going to bust out the bear stance once again to try and get in there. But as he comes through, no, no, it's actually there as well. Does put the stun down on towards the but they just turn around, put as much back as they can because Dragon Mords are going for Dragon. Now take a look at the vision here for against all three. They know this is going on. It's going to be a four versus four because Elise is missing. But once Kale joins the party, it will be five on four. Can Dragon Mords pick up any kills? They jump in towards the there. The Howling Gale actually knocked Hosan back quite a lot, and he's taking a lot of damage here from his fortune and Janna. There comes the laser. Schleyer manages. To to take down Hosan. Now the exhaust comes in onto Yamato Khan and he gets knocked up in the air as well. The flash is coming out. Virtual starts to charge in. Well, that will be a one for zero. But look at this. Against all authority, turn back around to Dragon. There are two pink wards right on top of each other, just to be sure about that, that they can see it as the grasping roots do land onto Schleyer. Will he get charged down here? Maluno is going in there. He does have Smite available, but there is a light binding. Gets knocked up. Can they finish off his very low flashing from No. -No he will secure kill number three for against all authority they're very low here and they don't want to risk dragon vision is king yeah and against all authority proving that by knowing where your opponents are and what they are doing you can win that engagement they went on dragonborns at the right time they prevented the dragon from from being taken down and they got two kills Schleyer might be caught out though we saw uh, Shushay coming in from the side. Is now level six, so does have that intervention available to keep himself or a uh, fellow teammate alive for that one. As we are going to see Hosan going in very aggressive. We know him as one of the most uh, aggressive ADs around, to be honest. He's not scared of getting right in there, even if it might uh, meet, you know, the, the balance of a knife edge in terms of the HP that he comes out with or doesn't come out doesn't with, as the case has it. been a couple of times. It's interesting to see him rocket jump in as well. Now, that was a safe position to do it in, but you have to watch him. If he does decide to rocket jump into a very aggressive team fight, no, no, gets caught by the grass from his virtual wants to fight. Yeah, and he's going to get the fling. Actually, flings move up back from that one. 
Let's say get rid of all those plants. They don't need uh, any of that extra damage coming in onto them there while they're trying to hold on to this turret. There is bullet time coming out just to clear the wave as much as they can. No, no, he's not particularly healthy. Doesn't have much mana to write home about either. And they're uh, really scared here by the looks of things against authority and how they're going to hold on to this one. Hosan is still burning through those pots. He's got himself quite healthy. Now, Dragonborn's showing intent. They want that bottom tower. The entirety of this push, we've seen Freddy for a brief glimpse. He's picked up 61 CS to his lane opponent, Yamato Cannon, because he's been untouched and unmoved in that top lane. Oh, so no move, it's still hanging around, but it does look like the rest of Against Authority have backed off, so they may actually be able to pick the turret up on this push. Same time, we have uh, Freddy pushing that top lane, but Osan and Mover here with three creeps, three or four still left in there, will pick up the turret lead for Dragonborns. But that doesn't, well, obviously it does help them in terms of gold, but it doesn't bring them back to that level point here at 10 minutes into the game. 13.8 to 12.9, so 1,000 gold pretty much between the two. 1,000 gold between them, and after that dragon fight, Dragonborns, they, they started that. They wanted Drake, they got pushed out, and they lost some kills, but they put a lot of wards and vision in the area, including those two pink wards and Drake, which ends up costing them 250 gold for nothing because of a miscommunication. Somebody said pink Drake, and two players did it instead of just one. So that is a problem. You can see those wards have just timed out, and it now means that against authority has positioning and have vision for Drake if they decide to go for it. With both of those bottom lane towers down, it literally just depends on which team groups up quicker to have you know their positional advantage on that objective. There is blue buff, which has been started by Freddy, but given, of course, over to Schleyer in the end. He is 2-0-1 now. I mean, Kale did catch up in the little CS lead uh, that Schleyer had gained, but won't be obviously catching up with the kills as of yet. Uh, he's got that chalice in there, the fiendish codex as well, so headed up nicely towards that. Athens from the start here. Uh, in terms of the AD carries, 101 for Misfortune, 010 for Tristana, and 92, let's call it 80 CS at this point. That equates to BF Sword plus Vamp, uh, vamp Scepter um, compared to just a BF Sword and a Long Sword at this point for Tristana. We'll see when Hosan has enough money to finish off his Vamp Scepter and Bloodthirst down. This is what we were saying with the vision and with knowing where your opponents are against the authority start a relatively safe dragon it's going down fairly slowly at the moment but Nono is finally in range and starts bashing away and dragonborns don't even contest they had very little knowledge of the hp of dragon and they didn't want to overextend maluna though it's a little bit deep yeah, just pushing a bit of damage out there onto the middle tower, and uh, he just pops the bear for him and says, see you later, I'm not going to get involved in that one. And uh, Like you said, the, the lack of vision there on Dragon from Dragonborn is quite ironic, considering they had two pink wards on top of it uh, the last time away. As we do see the light binding coming, Hosan actually will rocket jump away from that one, but there are four men here from Dragonborns right now. They need to be a little bit wary against all authority that they don't get caught out in this situation. Nice double up coming off the Zyra plant there onto Triss. Really, really nice done you can see that Schleyer's lags hiding just out of vision so if a light binding goes out someone could be caught doesn't manage to catch it onto Shushe though and he is working towards that Nash's tooth so the gold is a little bit more expensive it'll take just a little longer for that item to complete we still have a four versus four in this middle lane while Freddy 122 is making Yamato Cannon's life very difficult he's extending that gold lead a little bit and continuing the pressure so AAA showing they're in control of this matchup. They're setting the tone and setting the pace. And Dragonborn simply have to react to whatever the predominantly French team are putting down. Yeah, and Freddy can be really happy with his performance so far. 95 to 68 CS in this top lane. Turret is almost gone behind him as well. Um, right in front of him, obviously, the one behind him on his side has already been taken down earlier on by Hosan and Movert. But he's pretty much causing Yamato Khan, as you said, to have a real hard time. If you look at the items there, Sorcerer Shoe, Doran's Ring, um, the Amp Tome Plus, the Crystalline Flask, compare that over with a tier, and the single... Um, uh, long sword, sword. to get the word out um, <laughs> there for him as well. So, going to be a bit of bully time still for this Kha'Zix, but as he gets uh, a little bit stronger, maybe getting a bit of help there uh, from Udia, who just came up into the lane, that could change how things go. Now, talking about Udia, we were looking at his skill ball just a moment ago. Maluno is maxing out that Phoenix stance, so he's going for the AoE clear over any of the other abilities. Currently, two points into Bear, two points into Turtle, and four into Phoenix. No points into Tiger stance just yet. So. I'd like to see how he decides to max it up. Interestingly as well, for those that don't know, Tiger Stance was changed. It no longer deals magic damage. It is uh, oh, it's still magic at the moment. It will be physical in the next one. So being, being worked, I'm going to be changed a little bit. 
see in the middle move it and virtual going head to head the grass being roots and plants all thrown out there but Schleyer now with that needs to large rod that's where he can really cause some damage here especially with that laser as he misses well, I should say was dodged there the uh, the light behind him or rather than missing by Hosan and that's on the Tristani, you just can't afford to get hit by a light binding. It's going to be followed up by the E and the ultimate, and you're pretty much dead. Pretty much. Unless that's, Kale's there. That's the story. Now, if interventions are on, it can be saved. We see against all authority pressuring on this middle lane. Light binding catches. Move out, though. Yeah, Kale wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my comment. <laughs> We're quite ironic. We were just talking about that one, and it happens exactly a second after we're finished. There is blue buff given to Shushe. He was not at that middle turret the entire time, and you now that brings us level in turrets, but you'd say advantage in terms of turrets goes over to against all authority. That middle outer turret gives you so much less vision when it's taken down, um, and they have to be careful now that against authority don't start pushing up into the, uh, their jungle, you know, warding it out, stealing away buffs, and generally just choking Dragon Bones. That's pretty much the story of that mid turret. Once it goes down, you lose all of that vision and all of that presence in the in in and around the entrances to your jungle. We actually see a lot of teams these days, once they lose that turret, they put a ward down, so at least they have the vision. So you can see people roaming around and moving in and out. We'll see whether or not Dragon Balls decide to do something similar in a setup, but they are definitely on the back foot. They are definitely playing from behind right now, but they do have champions that can come back very quickly. One good team fight on Kha'Zix can get reset after reset and allow you to actually pick up some, some additional kills. You have a very tanky, beefy Udia that can survive a lot of damage with that turtle stance, and of course, when Kale's around, you can make use of intervention, but Kale needs to be around for that to happen. Yeah, and in the late game as well, Tristan are going to be a very, very dangerous uh, champion to deal with as well. Uh, who also has the resets, by the way. We didn't really uh, Yes, the rock, rocket jump resets as well. Now we can see double yumps for this one. We'll see whether or not the Yordles will be yumping anywhere, but they need to get the kills first, because they currently got zero on the board, and without a kill, you cannot yump. Well, you can, but only once. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment, against the authority, they've decided to slow down the pressure. They were very aggressive. Freddy runs head first into the bug. What's better? Oh, let's have a look here. Yamato kind of taking a lot of damage. There's a rappel. He's going to come down right next to him, and there is the kill from Freddy. Minion's going to be hammering away on him, but that's not going to be enough damage to finish things off. And there was it, basically haunting guys finish Sorcerer Shoes, and he's like, right then, I can have this one. Actually, we did see Yamato kind of stuck there. He thought that he could have that fight. If it wasn't for Freddy having that repel to avoid one more auto attack or one more taste of fear from Yamato Cannon, he would have gone down for sure. Nevertheless, he was able to survive and in that engagement proving that arachnids are more powerful than insectoids. That's the scientific breakdown <laughs> to, uh, to that one versus one in the top lane at least. And uh, you can see the vision ward in the mid lane, by the way. We just scanned past it, slowly running out, but it was exactly like we said. When you get denied that tower, that is pretty much what you're talking about. There's a lot of wards on the map, actually, for AAA right now. Yeah, and as they should do, they've taken that middle outer turret down. But you see the top, top teams will always do that as Maluno spots another one coming in there. Dragon is coming up in just a few seconds' time. And against all authority, going to want to cement their gold lead with the pickup of that Dragon. Shushi is actually on the bottom side of the map. Kazix, though, is headed north to stop that big wave pushing in onto the inner turret. And that should mean, honestly, that against all authority have an easy time of picking up Dragon. As soon as he shows himself, which he has just done so again, against all authority immediately realize that it will be a four versus four engagement. They have a lot of counter engage potential if anyone dives onto them. Oh no, no, he's gonna get best and stanced up by Udi up and wins the trade convincingly. Yeah, Maluno now having to back away completely. There is a flash cocoon flashed away from actually by Maluno as well. So both players burning that flash, but in the meantime, Virtual knowing down there on the Dragon, and that will bring us to 27.6 to 22.7. 5,000 gold lead in place now for Against All Authority. You can see the numbers at the bottom of your screen. Lux to Kale, 1,500 gold difference is literally a needlessly large rod between these two teams. And because of that item advantage, it allows AA to be more aggressive. They're playing this mid lane, they've got a five-man stack, and Dragon Balls are nowhere to be seen. 
Yeah, and that's a strange thing about this that Dragonborn's decided not to get involved. Is Mumok going to get hit by the combo? Oh, Kale there was comes there. Kale. And that's what we talked about before. If Kale's there, you can be safe from that. But if she's not, you're going to die. That was right on the final hits there. The uh, bullet time being combined in with everything from Lux. Uh, but they've taken down that inner turret. And that's what's weird for me that Dragonborn's knew that Dragon was coming up from that one. But in fact, they sat back but still lost the inner turret in the middle lane. Yeah, they simply didn't have the numbers to defend that off. Your Mata Cannon was pushing the top lane, counter pushing that massive wave that was there. The rest of the team was still recalling and they weren't able to get in place to defend it. Against the authority, burned a lot of ultimates. They didn't secure the kill, but they did get the turret and that is way more valuable because the middle lane is now only the inhib turret. Right now, it's a roll reversal as Dragonborns have a four-man stack in the mid lane. Cocoon missed, so nobody got caught out and they're trying to clear these waves, but that huge range on Hosan is a Allowing him to just bash away on that turret all day long. And there's the Janna Shield just uh, helping things out. The E comes out of Lux, but that turret will actually fall there. Nicely done by Dragonborns. And now that can always be a risky play against a team that can lock you down. This time it's Maluna that is going to get caught out. Look how many times he's knocked up there with the Howling Gale coming in as well. Intervention that was used by Shushay. Yeah, very good intervention once again, saving the life of his teammates and whatnot. But I'm looking at the, the, the champions and the whole reason that entire engagement happened to begin with is because of Hosan's passive on Tristana. Currently got over 630 range. So he he can stay so far away, really stay on the outskirts of the majority of his opposing enemy's abilities and just continue bashing. Once the tower went down though, obviously Dragonborns went a little bit more aggressive and luckily Mono with that struck passive, he got all the way from the bottom lane up to pick the fight. But nevertheless, they at least trade back and forth and Dragonborns there holding that 5k gold lead at only 5k. It hasn't snowballed further. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need to do. Obviously bringing it a bit closer would be a great step for them as well but right now they can be happy that they're not falling any further behind uh, there's a 30 cs difference between the 80 carries as you see Shleia just using his ultimate to farm and do damage at the same time there on towards move uh, move it but if we look at the ad carries now what we're talking about them bloodthirster bf sword brutalizer for misfortune compared to the bloodthirster pickaxe and berserker greaves finished here for tris so uh misfortune is going to be doing a lot more for them but as you said that range of tristan can make a big difference in the team fights if they can't get into the back. So Hosan's going to have a difficult time because he likes to play aggressive, he likes to be in your face fighting, and he's but he doesn't not, need to be with Tristana. He doesn't need to be, but he's not going to be able to. He gets caught up right now, though. Yeah, but he's Tristana after all. <laughs> Rocket jumping over the top there. Yamato Cannon and Mover actually coming around the side here to try and stop anything else happening. Freddy actually will be picking up that red buff from Dragonborns. On the other side, the red buff of Against Authority was taken by Nono. So they're going to have two red buffs coming into what could be another fight here shortly. It's definitely going to help them out. That kiting potential, but Nono's gone very, or got caught out just a little bit. Flashes burned. Can Shusha get anyone else? Doesn't look so. Yes, no. Yeah, I think he will have made the call uh, to not push that one too far out there. The rest of Against All Authority uh, did start to close in. Obviously, uh, Janna was there with him, but we did see Lux coming around from that top side of the map. The blue buff is available, as we are going to see Freddy here getting caught out by Yamato Cannon. But can the rest of Dragonborns actually get up there and get involved in him? Yamato Cannon is going to flash. Ignite going down. There is a repel. Will that buy enough time for the rest of Against All Authority to get in here? Nope. They just want that blue buff at this point. The plants were put down as well just to stop them coming in. And that was nicely done by Dragon Pawns. But at the end of the day, that is only their first kill here. Well, they need to string a few more of those together to pull themselves back into the matchup. And having a couple of wards in the river is definitely what's going to help them do that. Oh. See, Diyota's been caught out. And now Hosan goes aggressive with that rocket jump. Wow, gets knocked in there. But actually, the Janner ultimate knocked him back towards the team. He has got intervention, but that won't be intervening for too long as he will fall. Five to one, and that's Hosan all over. That is Hosan in a picture, you know? Correct. I'm going in for this one. Oh, there's a lot of people here. You cannot afford to use that rocket jump when you don't have full vision and full knowledge of where your opponents are. It cost him his life, and if he continues to do that, it's just going to be throwing more gold to your opponents. We were talking about the items a couple minutes ago, and one thing that we didn't really touch on is the differences in just how that actually affects them. Nono's Misfortune is sitting around about 280 attack damage to Hosan was sitting around 230. And that's before the plus 50 AD that Eye of the Storm gives you from Janna. So there's literally a hundred attack damage difference between the two champions right now. And if they do get into any sort of duel, Nono's definitely gonna win out just because of that superior AD. 
Well, Dragon is up here in 30 seconds. Dragonborns, I don't think, have the exact timing on that one. They'll not be too far off because they kind of timed you know, when they came into that middle lane to the inner uh, to that inner turret, how, uh, how that one went. And there is a ward coming down. So as I said, general timing was there from uh, Dragonborns. Now they're going to have a ward to know exactly when that Dragon comes up. The problem that they have here is that Diude is clearing out everything on the top side of the map. So, you know, you can't ever be safe in taking a Dragon where against all authority aren't there because they could, at the same time, be going towards Baron. There's one thing that Dude's doing very well, which I don't really think we felt from Karatis previously, is that map control that he's giving his team. He is playing a different champion. Janna has the ability to roam a lot more freely, has no boots at the moment, but really good move speed, 379, thanks to her passive and her, her scaling on a W. So it just helps her out. With that Oracle's Elixir as well, it's just vision control for AA, and that's what's allowed them to go in for this dragon. They don't know about that very cheeky ward behind the wall, but Dragonborns are simply too far away to contend, so all they could do is sit and watch it and you know cry themselves to sleep because they can't fight for it. Yeah, it almost makes that ward a waste of time in the end. I mean, they know now the, the spawn time for you know, maybe next time that they can get in there, depending on how things change. But again, against all authority, take Dragon, come storming up this middle lane. And we'll see how they play this one out. They've got a very big advantage. That 5k gold is now 6k gold. But Nono is putting himself in a position to deal damage. They do catch Maluno out for the cocoon. But you're not really going to burst down Udia with a runic bulwark, as well as those Merc treads and his turtle stance. So in the end, AAA just forced backwards after the wave clear, clearing out the wards, denying all the vision possible. And it's going to be, you know, what do Dragonborns do to pull themselves in here? They have to get a catch. They have to rely on a bare stun stance and a grasping root followed up by Kha'Zix and Udia to kill somebody and actually win them a team fight. Stacking up five versus five in the top lane. A good wave clear for Dragonborns. Oh, they actually landed the shot there on towards Maluno as Virtual takes a bit of damage from Yamato Cannon. But again, the bear is pretty tanky himself. Got those Merc Treads, got that Locket of the Iron Slurry again as the Cocoon will land. Not on the right target, but Maluno at least will be taken out of the fight with that. But there you is want... a light binding from the side. There is bullet time as well. Shushi actually protected himself. Who's He's going to go down. Surely he jumps away. He's burning from the ignite. Oh, he's going to get finished off in the end by Freddy. Well, that was close stuff to get in away. And the make it rain was almost enough to finish him off in any way over the top side. And again, that is a two for one in favor of against all authority. They're going to back off to Baron. This is pixel perfect precision from the against all authority pick strategy. They land one ability, one form of CC. They kill kill that target, and they carry on fighting. You see Diud using the Monsoon just to heal up his teammates while they take Baron, but Maluno does not have Smite. This is very crucial. He can pick a fight here, but he may not be able to outsmite because he doesn't have Smite available. Now there is a Repel. They're going to go in towards Maluno. Here comes a laser through it. Schleyer, who will pick him off. He's now dominating at 6-0-2. Shushi coming in around the side. Yamato Cannon still fairly healthy as well, and whilst they've not been able to pick up any kills here, Dragon Balls, they've stopped the Baron being done. That's very very, very crucial for them right now with a 7k gold lead before any additional objectives or buffs. It means they can still contest a little bit if they catch somebody out. They managed to group up in the middle here and going to put some damage onto this tower. Once your Mata can start beating away, I don't know if they'll be able to get it down before against the authority arrive because they're a very quick team. Yeah, and they are going to run straight in there with Freddy from the start. Will he land a cocoon? Yes, he hits a cocoon. Shirelli has popped there in on towards Mover. Intervention is used, but how long will he survive? He puts down the strangle thorns, but no, no, will get out of their grip and picks up another kill. 10 to 1 now in favor of against all authority. They're pinging over by Blue Buff. They've seen that Shushi is going over there to take it down, but will Shushi be wise enough to get away? In the end, the laser comes across, which was a little bit preemptive, but against all authority will survive steal the blue. Very well played against all authority, managing to catch out Moobert with a cocoon, and he actually had a panic ultimate. If he doesn't reset. It, it, <laughs> the strangle thorns from Moobert were half on the jungle camp. It was on the trees and on the cliffs there, and it was just because he panicked so much, he said, well, they're going to jump onto me, forgetting that everybody else has ranged abilities. So four members of AAA just stood on the outskirts of that ability and said, well, thanks for wasting the cooldown because it's not even going to interrupt us. If we'd thrown that a little more to the side, he may have been able to buy some additional time, maybe getting away. But nevertheless, very well played by AAA. They are literally landing every single ability that they need to to pick up those kills. And this is how you play a pick strats. 
Yeah, and there is the next one in towards Yamato Kan and the laser gun and coming. There is the invulnerability who, well, he flashed very late from that one actually, but he survives. There's the key thing. He's going to be going home with that one, but against all authority, awaiting right by this turret right now. And I'm going to be looking on the second pick the to binding. actually get in there. There's another one, and this time it will be a kill on towards Shushe. Maluno being chased down. There's Shirelia's Reverie popped as they go in on towards Hosan. He uses ulti to blast one of them back, but against all authority, have done what they needed to do here, which is, yeah, okay, great, pick up kills, but maybe more importantly, take that inner turret down, and I'm not sure that they're going to be stopped here. Dragonborns are playing catch way too often. It's not the right game to be catching every single skill shot thrown at you, and they need to dodge those abilities before they get shut down. Hosan caught again. Yeah, he's going to get knocked up in the air, actually Pop. jumps away, but Schleyer gets the final hits off there. And, well, it's not looking good whatsoever here. As the turret now going to be Siege Mover, taking a lot of damage. There's a flash in from No No. Is he going to be able to pick up the kill? No, not quite. Strangled Thorns will knock them up. But Yamato Cannon gets hit with a light binding. Where's the finisher? He will put his ultimate on. That will save him for a little while. But Virtual noms down for the kill. Now Maluno and Shushe getting involved. Shushe chasing down Virtual, who's getting hit by the turret. The Howling Gale will knock him up. We see the flash away from Freddy. And now Schleyer is trying to run away with that one as well. There's there was the Shirelias popped by uh, Dude, and they will run away. 13 to 2. And did the turret actually go down there? No. It no. Didn't. They managed to hold off the turret, but that was because Cancel Authority had very little they interest the kills, in it. Yeah. They were getting blood hungry, and they wanted to kill Dragonborns behind their own base. The laser comes out and fries 50% of Shu Shu's HP from that. Deathcap, Haunt, uh, uh, Sorcerer Shoes, Athenes, and the makings of a Void Star. Schleyer is playing Lux perfectly, but again, it's the whole team. They land one skill shot, everybody commits to it, they pick up the kill, rinse, repeat. And they've rinsed and repeated that one 13 times here, and again, if it wasn't for Kale, it would have been a lot more by this point. His uh, ultimate says Shushe, not just saving his team, but saving himself a couple of times as well, where it's got a little bit hairy. There is you taking down the ward from the Baron Pit. Actually, had Tristana to the top side, move it from the, uh, the left, or the right, if I could tell my lefts and rights, and Kazik's coming in from the bottom side as well, but none of them really trying too hard to get in there and catch him. In terms of uh, items that we've been seeing picked up here, Infinity Edge and Zeal added in with the Berserker Greaves and that uh, Bloodthirster and Brutalizer from earlier with his fortune. Look at Tristana, still on what we talked about. Only the Home Guard boots have been upgraded since then. Chalk and cheese between the two AD carries, but when you've got every single dragon in the game, as well as you know so many additional towers, all the kills, and 100 CS additional to work with, Nono's always going to be leaps and bounds ahead. 307, the fact that he's got 11, no, 12,000 gold to 7,500. I mean, that alone spells doom for your opponents. We were talking earlier in the day how in, in the, the late game, it's really the AD carries damage that determines who's going to be victorious. And when you've got an AD this farmed and this fed, you have to feel this is against authority's game to lose. Yep, and the thing is, Kazix, you know, he's gone <laughs> full on damage in there as well. So he's not exactly the strongest, ma uh, strongest man in the team. They're going to have to be relying a lot on Shushe, who, uh, you know, to put the intervention in there as well. But the problem is, if he has to use that on someone else, he can't then be used on Yamato Cannons. We are going to see Maluno going. There is the monsoon. It will knock Yamato Cannon away. But as I was talking about, it takes a lot of damage. Intervention comes in. He's going to dive to no no. Shushe doesn't have the intervention for himself. They turn around onto Mover, who's going to flash away. Maluno taking damage there in the middle as they pop the Shirelias. The laser comes in. The bullet time comes down. They can't quite get in there to finish off the Udia, but they're going to have this inhibitor turret away. The inhibitor itself will fall, and it's a five versus three right now. Uh, sorry, five versus two right now. And Maluno and Move Up between them honestly are not going to be that scary for against all authority. They may look to get in here for the win. First Nexus turret going to be started off. Actually, no, no, going right in. There's the repel. They managed to take down Move Up. Uh, this just chasing in Maluno away to stop him doing any kind of damage. The Cocoon will miss, but that doesn't really matter. The sex, uh, second Nexus turret goes down. The Nexus itself is going to be falling, and against all authority here, going to make times even worse for Dragonborns with another victory. Against all authority, finishing in style right there, showing how they play, you know, just the composition. Three members of the team, zero deaths to their name. 709 Lux, 508 Misfortune, and 0015 Dude. Dude, that is a good Janna. Dude, where have you been?
because honestly, that was a completely different support. Well, obviously, it was a different person, <laughs> uh, but the difference was night and day. Honestly, between what we've seen come from Coralius, the the work with vision that you did in that game was really, really formidable. Uh, but that's enough about the game from us. We're going to throw it over to Jason and Freak to break down the match. Wow, that was our fourth match of the day. And they all seemed a little bit similar. They all were pretty one-sided, which I wouldn't have expected coming into here. But 17-2, to two, Dude, against all authority, succeeded against all the Dragonborns. Yeah, they did. It was it was a well-played match overall. I mean, it was very system, <laughs> systematic by them. Like, they knew what they wanted to do, and they executed it really well. I mean, we could talk about just the beginning of the game. We had the lane swap, so we had um, Nono and Dude at the bottom lane versus Yamato Cannon, and you had Freddy 1-2-2 against Hosan and Mover. Yeah. And you saw something happen. I, I know Trevor pointed out quite a bit is that when Dragonborn started to push that top turret, mm -hmm. you had Virtual arrive, and yeah. he just sat there and defended the turret. But on the other side, you had Yamato Cannon push up against his own turret. Maluna wasn't there, and that turret ended up dropping mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty shortly right after. And yeah. that was a big start to the entire game. It was interesting, though, because even despite that, somehow Dragonborns managed to trade turrets equally, which surprised me a lot, right? Like, the move I thought was so proper from, from AAA. Like, I think it was an excellent, excellent move. And then somehow still, they managed to trade turrets, which, uh, I mean, I kind of repeated myself, but, like, it's rare to see that. Normally, when a, a team kills the turret first, they swap back and they hold it. Right. Yeah. But I mean, they were able to get those, but it just, it wasn't enough. Dragons were taken every single time against all authority. Yeah. They kept punishing them for being out of position. Uh, I believe the, the first one of the game were, was when Yamato Ken was actually in the top lane trying to push that lane back, but mm -hmm. they just took it free or for free. And they honestly got punished because of that. Yeah, they did. There were a lot of really punishing fights. You mentioned um, a a executing so well, and Schleya really executed everybody on Dragonborns. <laughs> and I believe we do have replays ready. First one is a uh, scoreline six to one team fight at the very top of the map. And uh, it's just how amazing light bindings can be if you want to roll that for yeah, us. Yeah, well, there's one thing I wanted to point out is that uh, we have a Lux, and then that's countered pretty completely by a uh, Kale, because you can pop that ultimate down and stop yeah. it. But when you get hit with two people by the light binding, it doesn't work out that well. So I want to get the repo on your screen and just show you what happened here, because this is kind of a story of how the game did develop. As we'll, we'll get on your screen very shortly. There, we, there go. we go. As we do see, Schley, he goes down towards this bottom side of the jungle. And then all he needs to do is just land one light bunny. It forces the kill ultimate, and they're going to have to back. But instead, he lands it on Mover and Shusha. And from that, when he doesn't even ult himself, it forces the ult, though, on the one person. And you can't save both like that. No. And um, because of the bolt time, they're able to help pick up that kill. And one thing that it kind of led on to was that Shusha ended up building a Zonius. Yeah. So he was building that just so it would, or he could commit his ultimate to someone else, and he mm -hmm. could save himself. But in the end, it didn't really work out. Yeah, and what you saw actually was, was the coordination from AAA was so good because when they landed the light binding, Nona would always channel bullet time as well. Right. So they would layer the ults together. They would make sure they were both coordinated. And, and as you said, right, when you've got two people caught, you can only kill ult one, and so it makes your life so difficult. So even though Shushe saved himself, they still got the kill onto the support, and it was just brutal over and over. And we've actually got another replay to yep. show off as well, which was the, uh, the end game fight, the winning one right here, where you just saw... I mean, really, a lot of mechanical skill across the board, but just how far ahead, I think, against all authority was. And one thing they had to point out during the fight was that Dude, he really, like, he didn't, he didn't surprise us, but he played really well for his first game. Uh, we saw an amazing John Ultimate when he was in his own jungle to push Ho Sun into, the, into his own team. All right, you noticed that one, and it worked out very well for him. And there's also another one in this team fight. So 13-2, to two, it's still very one-sided, but we'll just show you how, how far ahead against all authority was and how much uh, more synergy they had in this fight. Look at that on your screen and go ahead and show you. Oh, oh I hit the wrong button. All right, we're going we're gonna to be sitting here for another 15 seconds as I speed it up. But we do have that mid push happening here. Or I'll go too far and go to live. Oops. <laughs> Let's you go ahead and get that off the screen real quick. And then let me go back and fix that. Freaky, go ahead and take over right now. All right. So, so uh, I mean, I like the team composition. You know, in the, in the pregame, these guys talked about it. And they said it was, it was a mirror of last time, really, where you had Kale on one side against the Lux sort of assassination. Now you've got Kale on the other side against Lux assassination. And really, both times, AAA pulled it out so much better. And, and again, you know, a lot of that you just saw from that prior fight, not the one you just showed, but the one before that, <laughs> uh, where they would light binding two people or they would light binding them when Kale wasn't on the screen. We saw a couple of those where Kale's off farming bottom or taking blue buff and, oh, I can't ult anyone. You're, you got caught. We saw that again uh, from the, uh, the Elise cocoon when they caught up to move out as well. That Zyra kind of mid game, the team's running away, uh, hit the cocoon. Again, the team kind of groups it together. And even against Kale, they still got the kill. So yep. this time we have... Hopefully I don't actually. hit J. Hopefully I stick to P only. So we're going to get that on your screen and just show you. It's the last team fight of the game. And we'll show you why, why D would really impress us this game. Um, it's because you see this nice engage. You have Dragonborns in a position to come in from behind. Yamato does pop his ultimate, but you see right here, 
Metal Cannon jumps in, and Dude's like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ult you, bro, and knock you out of this fight. Knocks him completely away, separates Shushay as well. Nono and Shleya are really protected right here, and they see the Zyra ultimate come down onto basically Shleya only, and he just flashes out of it, and they end up having Nono tank the damage out of Hosan, who wasn't there to really fight, and they just picked him off one by one, taking out Yamada Ken, taking out Shushay right after, and they just single-handedly, like, they outgeared him, they mm -hmm. outskilled them, and they outplayed him in that team fight. Yeah, that was a battle of basically equals, where the backline fought the backline, right? You had you had Elise and Kale and Kha'Zix kind of all fighting uh, with, with Lux in there, and they are more or less paired off against each other, and then even with intervention, you saw they were able to separate and kill off Kha'Zix. Uh, the Kale in the background basically lost 1v1 to Freddy's Elise. It was it was absolutely brutal. And, uh, you know, MVP for that game, we've got to say Shleya. I think he played phenomenally. That Lux really opened everything up for his team. Uh, and that's what the that's what his team keyed off of, right? Was Lux Binding's initiations. That's that's that team comp, though. I mean, that's exactly what you want to do. They execute it perfectly. And if you do that every time, you're going to win your games. Um, and also, we have to point out a little bit is that virtual. I mean, he created that opportunity for Shleya in the beginning. He got mm -hmm. that nice flash on a Shushay, the flip, and then Shushay flashed, but there was a red buff on virtual. They were able yep. to get that kill, and it really set the ball rolling. But overall, against all authority, very solid game. And it helps it helps them stay out of, actually, I believe they're still in relegation in the bottom two. But it helps get them one step further to being out of it. They they are back up to six there. Okay, they, they were, they were tied with uh, Giants when they lost, and then okay. they've taken them over in our sixth so place go. right now in the standings. And uh, of course, the other man to talk to is the new man, Dude, and that'll be Shocks with an interview. Absolutely, I'm here with the new kid on the block, Dude. Now, um, first off, can you tell us, you know, you just joined the team and Corellis left. So how did that come into play? How did that happen? Um, I played a few months ago with Nono, Virtuel, and Shaya in an uh, other team called uh, Epsilon. And then uh, they all three left uh, for AAA to join uh, Freddy and Carlist. So um, after they decided to, to take another support, they called me. Um, very good game. A first game in the LCS and immediately, you know, fending off that Kha'Zix with the Monsoon. Uh, going very aggressively, trying to ward that blue. So what do you think that you bring to the team that's more helpful maybe than what Karalius brought to the team? Uh, first of all, new champion, um, and um, Kalius was a, um, a defensive support, I'm more aggressive than him, and um, I like uh, to have an, uh, an aggressive play style with a champ like Janna, and um, it was perfect, yeah, I, I think, I think so. <laughs> uh, last time this team, so AA, when you were not there yet, they played against uh, DB, and they won with a base race, this time it wasn't close at all. Can you elaborate on how the team comp really worked to just shut them down? Uh, we saw they pick uh, like uh, jump team like Tristana and Kazik. So Jana was very good in this uh, type of comp because um, because of his passive, Volibear can run very fast, and Udir is very easy uh, capable. So that was perfect for us, and uh, that's how we we work. So we catch, and if they want to engage, we go back. That's how it works. Okay. Uh, you've only just uh, joined the team. You're kind of an outsider, and now you're an insider. So do you think there's anyone on the team who deserves to be voted as uh, to the All Star game? Uh, I think Shleya deserves. We just saw his looks. He's doing great, so he deserves it. Thank you very much and good luck. Now, um, I'd like to remind you, of course, of our Twitter question for today. Which recent EU LCS roster change has had the most impact and why it could be dude joining AAA, for example? Tweet us your answer at LOL Esports, hashtag uh, LCS. The same if you have any questions for the people uh, at the analysis desk. Now. Whenever these two teams meet, they put on a show. And now the heat is on even more, as they both want to clinch that number three spot. SK versus Evil Geniuses after the break. Don't go anywhere. Merci beaucoup.